President Trump set to meet with a number of world leaders next week at the G20 summit, and the stakes at this point couldn't be much higher. I can say this, China wants to make a deal very badly. Do you think it's going to happen? Because of the tariffs. China wants to make a deal. If we can make a deal, we will. All right, but it's not just China that we're talking about today. Leaders from Turkey, from Russia, Saudi Arabia, a number of big players also in attendance here to break down what we can expect as national security analyst and international relations expert, Dr. Rebecca Grant. Doctor, thanks for coming on this morning. Let's start with China. And we have this huge ongoing trade dispute and a lot of money in the balance here. Xi Jinping will be there. A lot of people think it's going to come to a head at the G20 in Buenos Aires. What do you think? This G20 meeting is going to be as dramatic as a reality show. <laughs> President Trump has been telling us all year that there may be a deal in November. So here's what's in play. The U.S. Trade Representative has over 5,000 products that are under a 10 percent tariff. That'll go to 25 percent in January. So can Trump and Xi Jinping agree to hold that off? And the reason is it's because of China's intellectual property theft right. of American businesses. And they don't want to. They haven't shown any sign that they want to make a deal like that. They want to give in other places, but they haven't mentioned that. The, the, the word is that their economy is slowing. If you look at the numbers, it certainly is. They're still doing well, but they're slowing down. Does that give the U.S. an upper hand? It's an important point. China has a great deal of debt and their economy is slowing. China is also in shock because the West has treated them with open arms for the last 20 years. Now Trump is pushing back. China may be hoping to get some support from other G20 members, but what he'll find is that most of the world knows we have to reset our trade balance with China. Yeah. So let's see if they're ready to deal or not. Yeah. One of the more uncomfortable meetings that could happen potentially, uh, we're going to have Erdogan, the leader of Turkey, and the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, along with the president, all in the same room. You just had this journalist killed in Turkey, and the CIA says it was Mohammed bin Salman that ordered it. Um, do you think that? Do you think these guys get anywhere near each other at any point? A huge question. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, both G20 members. Saudi is the only Arab nation in the G20. And so that's the question. Will they greet each other? Will they sit next to each other at a meeting? Now, note that President Erdogan has stopped just half a step short of saying that Mohammed bin Salman is responsible for this. Yeah. They have said highest levels, but not named the crown prince directly. Yeah. These are two countries that don't really like each other to begin with before uh, the killing of Khashoggi. Let's listen to the president talking about how important the relationship is with Saudi Arabia. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to conclude that the crown prince did it. A lot of you said yesterday that they said he did it. Well, they didn't say that. They said he might have done it. That's a big difference. And frankly, if we went by this standard, we wouldn't be able to have anybody as an ally. He makes a point there, and the relationship is much bigger, I guess you could say, than this moment, the relationship with Saudi Arabia, the importance of them in our world. Our alliance with Saudi Arabia is hugely important. Turkey is also a very important yeah. NATO ally. And we rely on these two countries to help us push back against Iran and to stabilize that region. We have to get along with them, and ultimately, they have to get along together to a degree as well. So the G20 will be a very big moment for these two world leaders. Yeah. Another one, Vladimir Putin will be there. And the last time the president met with Vladimir Putin, he got a lot of criticism in Helsinki. What do you think about this meeting? Well, it's a sign of how important the Saudi, Turkey, and Xi Jinping relationship are that we're almost not worried about Putin. He'll get a seat down the table, befitting his relatively small economy. Yeah. Russia's economy is smaller than Canada's. So Putin will be there <laughs> glowering at the capitalists. But I don't think the main drama will be with Putin. They'll all shake hands, but this is not about Putin this time. Okay. All right. That will be interesting to see how he plays that. Um, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, a number of other European leaders will be there. The head of the EU, I think, is going to be there as well. Um, NATO funding, probably the biggest topic that they are disputing about at this point. Do you think any, uh, anything happens there? They'll talk that a little bit, but they all have important bilateral issues going on. Yeah. Angela Merkel, who is stepping down, will be talking with Xi Jinping as well. And Theresa May in Britain, she's just happy to be there given the turmoil <laughs> over Brexit. Yeah. I'm curious to see how Canada, how uh, Trudeau and Trump get on. Let's hope for a hug or a handshake there. But there will be a number of important bilateral issues. And it shows that Trump is willing to be a smooth diplomat in this big international forum. He's upping the importance of 
of the G20 by bringing such important issues to the table in that major international forum in Buenos Aires. Yeah, I mean, if you think about all the, the different relationships he has and all of those big meetings that could happen, he's got a lot on his plate for this meeting in uh, Argentina. Thank you so much, Doctor. We appreciate your time. Thank you.